we have great opportunity. Of course, human life is a great opportunity, and every morning we have a great opportunity to connect with Krishna through his holy names. It's a process that's called nirnitam, it's authorized and recommended by the greatest teachers through history, throughout history. And the greatest benefit comes from those who are fully dedicated to the mantra. And this is the emphasis of the practice of devotional service is if you come closer to the name of Krishna and you're coming closer all the time to Krishna. So in every culture of the world, there's this sense of the importance of marriage. Generally, in each culture, there's a ceremony that's demonstrative. Everyone comes together in the village or the city and recognizes that you know, you're getting married now. And then there's a proclamation at most weddings that this is in sickness or in health, good times or in bad times. Am I correct about that? Those are the ideas that you're coming together and you're going to become one, basically, and you're going to work together no matter what else happens. Yes? So, my Madunga teacher once told me, you have to marry your mantras. As in Madunga, there are mantras, like Teraketa, <laughs> the simplest of mantras that you learn in playing the Madunga. So, so he said, you have to marry your mantra. And if you marry your mantra, he said, then all other abilities will arise from that. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also recommended in so many ways that we marry ourselves to the Maha Mantra. That is, make a firm commitment that this, no matter what I'm feeling like or what the situation is externally, that I'm with the mantra all the time. So think about marrying your mantra. And of course, initiation is kind of like a marriage ceremony. You're making the proclamation, no matter what, from now on I'm going to do this. But in our hearts, we can make that commitment. And when we do, we marry the mantra, then in all circumstances of life, we can continue to take shelter of the chanting of the holy names. What do you think? Yes? yes? Need a verbal yes, just like in the exit row on the airplane, that you're able to help in the, in the case of an unlikely case of an emergency. <laughs> yes, Hare Krishna. Let's chant taking shelter of the holy name and marrying ourselves to the mantra. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Krishna Hare Ram Hare Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Ram Hare Ram Ram Hare Krishna Hare
just checking in, see if you have any reflections on the idea of marrying your mantra. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. That was a very powerful uh, point to meditate upon, marrying the mantra. Uh, in this connection, I was reminded of uh, Guru Mukha Pada, uh, Padma Vakya Chitete Kori Aikya, making our consciousness one with the words of the Guru. So, uh, yeah, this oneness, uh, it, it's something really worth meditating upon. Yes, Prabhupada mentions how whatever success he had in spreading the Krishna consciousness movement came from being one-minded with the order of his guru. And of course, the primary order is to chant Hare Krishna. And when we're in alignment with that, then everything else emanates. Everything else becomes possible. Yes. Oh, you're pointing to someone else. <clears throat> Maharaj, that mood of uh, marriage is like in the last verse of Sikchashtakam is ep epitomized like Ashlishya Vapadradam Pinashtuma Madarsanan Marmahatam Karotuva Yatha Tatha Vapitadhatu Lampadu Mat Prananathas Tusa Eva Napara. Like when he says, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that how, <clears throat> like whether you care for me, whether you don't care for me, but I. I am surrendered to have, I have given up everything to you. So I was just remembering that verse of Sikshashtakam. Very good. That's the mood. No marriage stuff? Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Um, when you said about marriage, I was thinking that uh, it's all about service when we marry each other, that we just serving each other all the time. And uh, similarly, chanting is, if we can take chanting as a service to Krishna, it's the two hours that we give him exclusively and just think of him and meditate on him. It's like a marriage uh, without any distractions. If we can just be focused on Krishna, then that's a nice service to give him. Sure. And you can also do it 24 hours a day, that sense of dedication, the idea one of the ideas of marriage is protection because there's so many so-called opportunities in the world. Everyone wants to talk to a certain person and say, hey, how about me? Uh, but when you're married, then there's a single-mindedness. It's like, well, there is nobody else. There's only one person. And similarly, when you marry your mantra, then there's this sense when every other urge comes calling and there are other opportunities, and they say, this is very nice, but I'm already married. You know, I have my ring on here. <laughs> this is what the neck beads are like. I'm already married, sorry. Can't help you this lifetime, maybe some other life. Jai. So we can think about that as that's our protection. Uh, this mentioned in the first canto, second chapter of the Bhagavatam that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the, the pati, or, you know, like the husband of the devotees. It's always there protecting. So if we take it like that, that we're taking shelter of the Holy Name, the Holy Name protects us from having to be involved in the various dastardly ways of the material world, and we can just take shelter there and say, I'm already taken. So we can chant in that mood. Gaur Premanande Haribo. Hare
Go pray, Manande Haribo. Just a last chance for some reflections about your chanting today or any of the ideas we talked about. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, somebody can tell me which verses precede Tasmad Eki Namanasa Bhagavan Sattvatam Bhati Shrotavya Kirtita Vyascha Deya Pujascha Nityada. Can you say? This is uh, first canto, second chapter. But the verse says, Tasma, therefore, because of all the f things that have just been mentioned, one should one mindedly take shelter of the pati or the Lord, the husband, the one who's the protector. Tasma ekena manasa. So in this uh, verse, pursuant to the metaphor we're talking about, marrying your mantra. And throughout the Shastra, but this particular verse has the word pati. So, tasmat ekena manasa, you should marry your mind to the pati through the process of devotional service, including chanting the holy names. So this is the recommendation. What are the verse? Yet anudyasina yukta. What is the verse that comes before tasmat ekena manasa? All Veda bases don't work today. What? What is it? What is the verse? Yet anudyasina yukta karma granti nibandana, which means that it's it's a metaphor of devotional service, like carrying a sword. Therefore. With sword in hand, 
you should take up this practice like a warrior and cut down the various anomalies that arise because of material life and then dedicate your mind completely to Krishna. And the best way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, is through chanting, is to marry your mind to the mantra. Okay, realizations. We have just a few minutes. Tim. Hare Krishna. Please Hare accept Krishna. my humble obeisances. Um, yeah, unfortunately for me, I've been a part of a lot of um, mundane marriages, like in the material world. It, there's also various other small ceremonies that go along with a, a, a material world uh, marriage. You need to have a uh, bachelor party. Uh, you need to have a honeymoon. And you need to get, have a get-together with all of your friends and talk about how your life is over. But that's not how it works when you marry your mantra. When you marry your mantra, it's always in the honeymoon stage. How romantic is that? It takes you, it, you're able to transcend the whole material universe with just a few words. Um, so it's always very, um, very romantic. And, and also, and in that way, I, was, I think it was a Sri Isha Upanishad in one of the purports, uh, it's always, uh, it's always spicy in that sense because we can organize our, our, our lives, our uh, work and material lives, like as if we have a secret paramour. And that secret paramour, the secret lover, is, is, the, is the mantra, you know. Um, so uh, that's, that's all I had to say. Haribo. Haribo. <laughs> okay, a couple more. We have time for like two more. Yes. So, um, Maharaj, I was thinking that, you know, um, since I, if I consider myself married to the mantra, others who are also married to the mantra, they seem like my family, you know, like, so um, devotees, you know, and uh, when I'm traveling and by myself and I don't see devotees, like, it's very, it worries me, you know, and I look for, you know, anybody with neck beads, and I've seen similarly other people also do, and it's happened like twice or thrice that, you know, suddenly somebody is saying Hare Krishna just by looking at us, you know, a bead bag or a... So it's just, you know, by marrying the mantra, you, you have a... Especially when you come from Vrindavan, you've been there for a while and everybody says Hare Krishna or Radhe Sham. <laughs> and then you get into Delhi and it starts going down. But once you get in the airport, the workers in there, especially, they'll go, hey, Radhe Sham. <laughs> and you feel like, okay, still connection. Yeah. Nice. You had something more? Okay, Hansapriya. I was also thinking the marriage with mantra, it makes it so much more meaningful because when you marry, you marry not just the mantra but everything else along with it. So, for example, the devotional service, this different aspects of devotional service also. So it doesn't feel like, okay, only the mantra, but it actually makes a whole big entourage of like deity worship or book distribution. And, and it just uh, it's, it makes much more meaningful because we understand the meaning of the man marriage with the mantra. And mantra can be relished by devotional service also. So I just thought that how the, it's not just the marrying mantra, but it also gives the whole, everything else, a holistic mm -hmm. support system. 52 cousins. Yeah. Haribo. Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, thank you for the point on marriage. Uh, marriage is a very intimate relationship. Uh, your partner knows you inside out. So when I have felt despondent and dejected because of the falsities that are there in my heart, uh, that relationship has helped me to come out of that. And there are points when I have not been able to understand what I have been doing, that it's been giving me constant feedback that uh, you, know, you need to improve here. So in this world, we are all looking for a soulmate. And if there is a relationship that will actually be with our soul always, that is going to be the holy name. It's extremely important to remain strong, to ha have someone you can be vulnerable to or with and really reveal your heart. Because most of the time, we have some sort of mask. We don't want to reveal everything. But your point is well taken that there's a way in which you can reveal everything to your pati, to Krishna, and just say, this is how messed up I am. <laughs> Please help. And that's really important. Thank you for bringing that point, and for everyone for considering the metaphor and digging deeply within it. 
and for gathering for this program. Thank you. Thank you. August 2nd. Oh. Next week. Nice. But I'm taking a trip, so that's it. Nice. Hopefully to die.